Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is Kuro, Chapter 49 of Really Fake, and this one is titled Cheeky Antics. Cabbage will always be his weakness. If a robber broke in and offered him a single cabbage for the entire house, he'd probably take it. Crow whispered into your ear, making you laugh. Do you need to rest, Pa? You asked, smiling when you saw that he was still staring out the window with delight at his green balls of happiness. Oh, I'd love to sit in my lounge, sweet pea, he replied with a wobbly half-smile, turning his head to look at you. Well, right this way then, you gestured valiantly towards the lounge area. Ah, my favourite chair, the old man crooned. Oh, how I love this lounge room. He shuffled forwards and let go of your arm so that he could sit down. Yeah, me too, Crow added with a leering smile. You turned and socked your cheeky man in the ribs. Ah, Crow grunted, cupping his side and stepping away. This lounge chair will forever be my most favourite. I swear to God you're testing me, you hissed at him, trying to kick him from where you were helping Pa sit down. I'd love a cup of tea. Pa warbled once his backside had hit the chair, oblivious to your own Kuro's playful violence. Of course, you replied your pa sweetly, before turning around to give Kuro the death stare. Whoa, Kuro said quickly, raising his hands in goofy surrender. If looks could kill, I'd be dead right now. Don't test me, you said lowly. Go make a cup of tea for Pa and I before I lose it. Yes, ma'am. He replied with a sharp salute, before winking and shoving his hands in his pockets and sauntering casually from the room. You rolled your eyes and sat down next to Pa on the double-seater lounge while you waited for Crow to make the tea. Pa? You asked your elderly grandfather. I know you've just gotten home, but do you think we might need to get a live-in carer to look after you? You reached out and took his hand in yours. Oh, I should be fine, Pa said enthusiastically. As long as I'm not dead, I'll be kicking. I love the enthusiasm, but I'm still concerned, you replied gently, patting his hand. Don't worry about me. You've done enough worrying over the past few weeks. I'm going to give you grey hairs. No, Pa, that's my job, Kuro said in a teasing voice as he entered the room with two cups of tea. He's right, Pa, he's the devil, you replied Kuro slyly, giving him a cheeky grin as he placed one cup of tea next to Pa on his right side and then held the other. Thank you, Ted, Pa warbled. You looked at Pa's cup of tea and then back to Crow, the most offended look on your face. Um, excuse me, where's mine? Yours. Yes. I'm kidding, short stack. Here. He handed the cup of tea to you and you poked your tongue out playfully as you took it. Thank you, Tit. Hey now, don't get it cheeky. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, Crow said knowingly, placing a sassy hand on his hip. That's a good saying, Pa said loudly. I say that all the time. I swear you two are the same age, you muttered, just above a whisper as you took a sip of tea. What was that? Kuro asked, knowing full well what you'd said. Oh, nothing, you sung cheekily, looking away as you brought your cup back down and sat it in your lap. Your rooster-haired boyfriend took a seat beside you and pinched your side lightly. Don't get too cheeky, he whispered in a raspy voice. Your cheeks burned at the tone in his voice, refusing to look at him. So, Pa... If you need anything from me, just say so, okay? Kuro offered your grandfather. Why, thank you, Tit. You've become a pillar in this family. I'm glad Yin brought you home, your pa replied, taking another sip of his drink. See? Kuro leered at you. I'm a pillar in this family. You're so going to fall off that ego someday when you do. You're going to break something because of the height, you teased. But anyway, you dropped your head a little bashfully before speaking again. I... I agree with Pa. You've been the best thing to happen to us. Okay, me. Oh? Crow leered with surprise. You're admitting it? Shut up, I'm not. You're a total sundary. Crow chuckled, wrapping his arm around you, doing his best not to spill your tea. But don't worry, I love a sundary. I'm not going anywhere. The three of you chatted for a little longer before Kuro excused himself to go home. It had been a huge afternoon and was starting to get late. I'll see you tomorrow, he asked. Yep. He replied with a smile, standing at the front door to see him off. Can I get a kiss? Also, yep, he replied with a chuckle, getting up on tippy toes to kiss him as he leaned down. It was wonderful having Kuro around. He was level-headed when needed, which was very much a captain trait, yet goofy and silly at the randomest times. Not a very captain-like trait, but still, either way you looked at him, you loved him. 
The next day at school, you managed to get a chance to chat to MF alone during lunch because Kuro was off practicing. So, what's been going on? She asked. I feel like we barely talk these days. Okay, so Pa's home again. He's okay. Well, yes and no, but mainly yes, maybe. So confident, Yin. MF deadpanned, giving you a dead stare. Oh, I don't really know what to do, but I hope you'll be okay. He just can't use his left side. Oh, that's not good. Sorry to hear about that, she said apologetically, slinging an arm around you. It's okay, we'll work through it. For some reason, having Kuro to help me has really calmed me down a lot. Mm, getting in the bed with him will do that. I mean, she leered teasingly. But we haven't done it, though, he hissed with embarrassment. She cackled away at your expense, reveling in the flustered look on your face. I mean, like, we haven't done it, done it, we've done other stuff. That'll change, she replied knowingly, raising her drink to her lips and tilting her head back. Man, but like, his anaconda is on steroids. Drink went everywhere as MF forgot how to swallow and instead blew the beverage out of her mouth, the flavoured liquid spraying in all directions at your comment. Who says that? Anaconda on steroids, the hell? She wheezed, choking out a laugh with surprise. Oh my god, Yin, please, in the middle of my drink and oh god. Sorry, he laughed. I wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. Please. I'm sorry. I'm going to need details from you when you do do it. That's going to be a story and a half, she said, wiping her front down. And there ends chapter 49. Stay tuned for chapter 50 to excuse my voice. Slightly losing the vocal cords, but we'll get there. I will keep soldiering on. I'll see you in the next chapter.